Hello, and welcome to the Annie Altman Show, the podcast, season five. Welcome to the fourth episode in the series on the Change C. Today, I'm here with Sean McLemore talking about changing your concept of concepts, whatever that means. We're going to find out and change and dive around. Sean and I went to high school together in St. Louis. We are virtually recording St. Louis to Hawaii. Sean is a musician, a songwriter, and a producer, and is also helping in the foundation of the Funds Distribution Company. So here we go, launching on into it. Welcome, Sean. Thank you for being here. No, thank you for having me. Yeah, you know, this oh. is on. Um, go ahead. I'm too excited. <laughs> I'm already jumping in. You go. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, uh, if you ever, you know, look up any of my music, I go by Black Lamore. Um, yeah, it's, you know, Annie, I, Annie and I have known each other for a while, but it's fun to, you know, make all these reconnections. <laughs> totally. Totally. From St. Louis, from, from John Burroughs High School. <laughs> to here. What a, saying that out loud. Hello. I would love for you to introduce yourself more in, I'll put the, your Black, Black Lamore, I'll put your tag and where people can find you, any links in yeah. the description here. And I would love for you to share a little bit more about about you, about the musical however the journey that got you on this podcast, however the journey <laughs> that got you into music, into talking about money being a concept and something we can use to distribute resources. Veer, yeah. Flow wherever you feel like going first. Um. So I think uh, uh, I started my life as a poor black child. Um, so that was, you know, wonderful, but, uh, St. Louis is kind of a weird place. Uh, I was kind of in North County and I didn't kind of realize that was the country until I came back home. Like I, I went to college at Loyola, New Orleans. Uh, I lived in New Orleans for five years. And I remember coming back home and being like, it's a lot of lakes in North County, like a lot of lakes and forests. And, um, you know, I, I kind of, I've seen a, a large perspective of the world. Like when I get to John Burroughs, there's a lot of money at Burroughs, like ton of money. Um, private, and, private St. Louis High yeah, School. Private St. Louis High School. People not know. in the St. Louis bubble. Yeah, <laughs> people, people, uh, you know, it's one of those high schools where like generations of families go and, you know, everybody, I remember, uh, leaving my middle school where we were really concerned about what high school am I going to? And in ninth grade, you know, kind of meeting kids who were like, I need to go to this Ivy League school. And I was like, yo, you were 13. Like, college is four years away. Like, <laughs> so, you know, um, I guess in New Orleans, I just live a wild life. Like, just debauchery like I'm a degenerate because of it like New Orleans is one of those places where you could do anything and somebody will be cheering you on in the background I'm like good job good job like <laughs> so uh that is definitely kind of I always say that's where Black Lamour was created you know that's where Black Lamour really thrived <laughs> um I really kind of moved around that bar scene. I actually worked in a nightclub for a few years down there. Um, and coming back home, I actually, that was kind of the start of really where I'm at now. Uh, because I, I came back home, I knew I needed to leave uh, New Orleans, you know, you can get very stagnant there where it's just a party lifestyle. But there's no real like progress, uh, both kind of moving up the ladder, uh, of whatever work you're doing, but also kind of progress on yourself because there is always someone behind you cheering uh, for whatever you're doing. Change. And so, yeah, you know, there are people who won't let you change there <laughs> mm. or, you know, don't care if you change. They'll be like, no, nah, that's just who they are. Um, and so back home, you know, one of the first things I had to do was like, oh, well, I can't party how I did in New Orleans in St. Louis, that is dangerous, um, you know, or at least a little more dangerous than it is in St. Louis, you know, or I'm sorry, New Orleans, they're not used to that. Uh, and I really spent like two years just working, you know, I live with my parents, uh, 
trying to figure out what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And doing the, the natural stress of the early 20s, like, oh, you know. Hello? Okay. I can still hear you. The video went off. Okay. My bad. Um, the natural stress of the early 20s of, uh, you know, oh, no. What am I supposed to do with my life? Like, ah. And I just randomly happened to uh, go to a studio with my brother and I walk in there and there's a guy, Marvel Q. Uh, and I watched him make a beat in, you know, 20 minutes or so. And right then and there, I was like, I'm in, I'm in. Like, <laughs> and ever since then, you know, him and I have just kind of, we, we spent a lot of time together in that studio and just have been trying to develop a sound and, you know, do something fun and new and, and, and creative and kind of, you know, it's music. It's, it's all about kind of getting the people to move and getting the people to feel something. Mm. So that's me. <laughs> Using music for change and for flow and to let go of concepts and words and all of, all of this. It is cool. I'm I'm really grateful to get to reconnect post high school and coming back and it's it's interesting to see that people changing and not changing and how they're yeah. both happening at the same time somehow. <laughs> I'm unclear. It's totally unclear. Is that do you think part of what got you in with music was that the change of it, the the flow of it, the the change also in your response to it, like it being different from other things where you're sort of feeling wishy-washy and then you're like, yes, this, I'm in, like, I'm here for this. You know what? Um, even within music, I feel like, and I've only been doing this for uh, about three years. Um, even within music, I feel like my role has, you know, changed consistently. Uh, I started out, you know, when I first started, I was just helping write because I was like, oh, you know, I got a little bar here, a little bar there. And then my producer was like, well, you might as well make an album. Like, and I was like, all right. So, you know, he changed my perspective of how I went about music. And then I made my first project and was like, and that made me change my perspective of like, okay, well now I want to put a little more intention into what I'm making. You know, like, what do I want to change about myself? Like, even in the process of, writing songs like you know i keep trying to change it from the last thing i made because you know you you sound like yourself when you do something but you don't want to sound like you're yourself saying the same thing over and like it's just so i think yeah it's a little bit of that like you know i'm one of those people i, I love change you know, i love new things like keep it coming and i think music definitely is a great outlet for that mm. Totally. It totally, for me, does that loosening music and dance of, like, letting go of that need to control the outcome or the, not even the need to, the, like, belief that I can control the outcome or that wanting to know how things go or it, it makes it a lot more playful and fun to me. Yeah. Which then makes it a lot easier to say, oh, there's so much more room to change and grow and wow, I love this genre of music too and like that type of dance feels good and whoa, I haven't sung like that before. Like, what about this? Thing? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. The fun, the like, the lightness of it, I feel like that can... When, yeah, when, like, once, yeah, when you like, when you really like, you know, when you, when you keep kind of changing and you feel like you're constantly growing, there really is like a lightness to it. Like, oh man, like, you know, and, and it's something that, you know, you can progress within yourself. You know, you can, you know, you can give your, you can be that person clapping for yourself behind you. Like, man, I really like what I made here. Like, you know, it's, it's so, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And sort of like you were talking about too, with that, like having people always encouraging you, you can be both for yourself. I'm advising myself publicly of, being the person clapping for yourself and also the person being like, Hey, what about this thing? Or like, what if you explored this Avenue or like, Hey, yeah. check this out. Maybe like, see how this goes. Yeah. Like that's, you know, it's, it, you get to be both, you know, the devil and the angel on your shoulder, you know, like. 
Totally. Which is cool with change in the triangle. And then you like, you're making, you're making your own little triangle there. <laughs> and then talking to other people, checking in, conversing. So Certainly. should we talk, do you think we should talk first about funds distribution company and then talk about concepts? Or you think we should start with being like, what the hell, what the fuckery is a concept? What's the concept of concepts? And then let's go, go to concepts first. first. Yeah, let's go concepts. <laughs> what is, how do you define that word? The word concept. What is your conceptualization of the word concept? I love I the think, I think concepts at the end of, at the end of the day are probably agreed perspectives. Ooh, I like that. I like to say a lot that objectivity is the sum of subjectivities. And I yes. feel like that, that feels related. Yeah. I think we said the same thing there. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. I was reiterating what you were saying in different, in different words. No, nah, I, I just, I never thought about it like that way. Like having, having more phrases to be able to describe concepts always helps because it's like, you know, different perspectives. <laughs> well, which is how I feel about music and words. And I've never, I've yet to put that together. To me, music is a lot of different ways of expressing the same feelings, like a lot of different mm -hmm. phrases of all the different shades of the same sort of thing. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So, is a concept to you a belief? Like, do you feel like those are the same thing? Um. Or what is a belief? I'm... I guess let's go there first. How do you define? Hey, Sean. How do you define the word belief? Uh. <laughs> So beliefs, I feel like, can be a little less uh, loose than concepts. Like, I, I feel like there's a little more faith in beliefs sometimes. Like, I believe this, you know, I believe that you are in Hawaii right now, but you could be sitting in the apartment next to me and this be a whole charade. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just kind of, it, it, belief is you know, you kind of knowing that you don't control the universe and whatever, you know, you need to believe to keep that going, you know, it's, that's a weird one. <laughs> totally. Whereas concept is more like, okay, well, we're all here. And agreeing on this. Bodies, agreeing that like that shade of color is what we call blue. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, which then is to, to talk about money and time, the classic, the classic yeah. human concepts. We, I know I've gotten so attached to those as being so literal. So yeah. as being not, not as like as, no, 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 these are, I've seen time on the graph of an axis before that can't possibly just be a concept. <laughs> Which then also, I'm, like, how that ties to faith and that part you were saying and belief of knowing that you don't control the universe, that nobody controls all the things. Yeah. <laughs> um, time is a funny one because, uh, you know, one time. Work, <laughs> working with musicians is, is a fun thing because mu musicians and artists are very opinionated. You know, if they didn't have those strong opinions, they wouldn't make as good of art as they make. So, you know, it, it's fun to hear them all. Uh, you don't always agree with them all. You hear some things that you go, that's completely insane. Like, <laughs> but I love pause. I love that as a perspective of like, I love getting to learn from musicians and artists about their strong opinions. You know, when, when they're an hour late for something or when they're like, whatever <laughs> delay, they're an hour late. They, they just, you know, they have strong, they have a strong belief system that is guiding their art. And I'm like saying all this with a sarcastic tone and also it's true. Very and also true. it's like, yo, we use time cause like, come on, what are you doing? And you can't rush art. Like that's the part of art that breaks these concepts for me is that there isn't the a art will come when it comes, you know, when, whenever, it, when it's ready, it'll be there for you. And you'll be like, I needed this at this exact moment. And you'll be like, but I was stressing about it all before up to it. Like, <laughs> um, you know, once again, that's the beauty of art. Like it, the one, I think, especially in my upcoming project, it was about me kind of controlling my stress because 
we live in kind of a time that like it's very high stress but people tell you not to be stressed we know stress is bad but I was kind of sitting here like I need something to do with this stress this stress is like you know you'll end up stressing yourself out and we all know what that means you know you it's so many side effects to that uh and I kind of had figured a way to channel it like I um you know there were just times in my life and you know come coming back to time and I'm gonna I'm gonna twist this back but I got you I, I'm uh, loving this it's I already <laughs> jumped in and derailed us some um, good and re-rail <laughs> There were there were times I catch myself where I'm like, I can use this stress, this stress that I have here, I can use it productively to push forward something that on a bigger scale I'm stressing about. Like I really wanted to make my second project and I really wanted to rush it because the first thing I had made was so random. Like the project is called something random and uh it, because it was you know in six months i went from not being a rapper to having an album on itunes and you know being like people being like this is really good and i was like yeah i've never been a rapper before and so now i'm like now i want to show off you know now i want to show you i'm really good like uh but when you think about time as a you know less of a linear thing and think about it as a graph you know those peaks where I was like, I can use it. I really had to keep track of them. And, you know, they kind of matched years sometimes. And sometimes they'd match different times in my life. Like, time is linear for us as our, as our um, construct of humanity. You know, for us, it's always moving forward. We can't make it go back. And so, yeah, we're all, you know, that's the, the, when you talk about dimensions, dimensions are directions, you know, height with death, those are directions. And the fourth direction that we're always going is forward with time. But at the same time, it's not linear. You know, if you pick up a history book, you can go and switch years. If you go look on your Facebook right now, you can hop from 2015 to 2020 and, you know, jumble between years and there and kind of see how time isn't particularly linear. Like I felt happy in 2015 and 2018 because I was doing this, but, you know, and so it just, you know, it's, it's all like, uh, you know, it, it, once you grasp that and are able to look at your life in a, in more of a web than a line, I think you start being able to to catch more of what you want. <laughs> I love that metaphor for it. <laughs> you're talking about manifestation, you're talking about all sorts of spiritual laws, you're talking about all sorts of psychological practices of letting it go. And that yeah. web bit of and also then of every being connected to the world and to all of the other humans and it not being yeah. so I have a friend who talks about this too with a similar thing you're saying where in this dimension or if time is the fourth dimension we are experiencing it linear linearly mm. linearly so how do we honor both of those of we're part of this web and also we can't go back in time like we can't go jump into two minutes into the podcast recording and be like psych <laughs> Yeah, like perfectly, you know, <laughs> and um, it, it's just like you know, once you let go of of wanting to hold on to time, because I I remember yeah, let's trying go, to explain. Let's dive into that one then, or like, because it <clears throat> Sorry. People do that all the time of like just let it go. Oh, just don't control it, and I'm like, okay, what? What does that How? mean? What does that mean? <laughs> Um, so when I, uh, when I, when I, when I was, uh, I guess at some point I, I'd been saying, you know, I'm making music to get my time back. <clears throat> and everyone was like, well, Sean, you can't get your time back. And I, I was like, I understand that, you know, I know I can't go back to, I want it to be like this when I was here or when I, but, um, 
working in the service industry is kind of was kind of weird because it's one of those things of your time really is controlled in a in a weird way there of like well and you can control time in a weird way, way there like i want people in from seven to ten because that'll make the ship fly by and then those other three hours i don't want anybody there and it'll make time you know slow enough that i can do some other things you know you, you, you learn the busyness of, of being busy, you know, makes time go fast. But I think being busy with no direction, you know, you just feel like you're wasting time. You're like, oh, oh, oh. So, you know, I get to music and now I feel like I have direction. And I'm like, well, I want my time back. And I think people were thinking that I was talking about, you know, trying to get the years that, maybe I thought that I'd wasted and I don't necessarily look at service industry. You know, I, I did like a decade in bars. It wasn't a waste of my time. It really, you know, really built me into a person uh, that, um, you know, it, it just, it, you talk to service industry people, they'll tell you it changes you, but when you get out of it, it changes you for the better. And um, it, it helped me be very polite. <laughs> Uh, totally. Well, you can often tell, I feel like, who has done any service industry work from people who haven't, or how they interact with people who are currently in the moment of doing a service industry. Um, yes, that's where, like, that's where I shine. You know, that's where I can go to a bar and the person be like, you worked in a bar, haven't you? Like, <laughs> totally. Um, But I was talking about... Um, oh, wait, also, my- I got to jump in. Uh, getting uh-huh. my time back or something like time back would be a cool album yeah. song name. Getting my time back. <laughs> There's um, also a meditation teacher who says something along the lines of meditation is the only activity that gives you your time back. I will, I, uh, I kind of agree with that as well. And you were talking about meditating in the studio and like having a studio space a lot of it. I'm like, I'm just chilling here and I'm in quiet. Just me and quiet. And you know what? It's funny you say meditating gives you your time back because that's definitely pretty uh, sure that's like not you said that one there, <laughs> I, I but I like it. Um, I think just in the sense of it helps you let go of the concept of you know minutes, seconds, uh, hours. I had an old roommate who talked about uh, how you know think of. Think if you didn't have your phone or, you know, uh, the watches, you know, now today has, today everybody has a, a lot of access to like seeing when the exact time is. You know, people used to just have sundials and be like, yeah, everything in between, you know, we're just trying to get to the big shadow. Like, <laughs> and so we, we can really focus in on time. You can check every minute if you wanted to. If you wanted to look at the clock every minute, you'd be like one minute is past. You could sit there and do that. If you want to get even crazier and get something that shows you 30 seconds, you could sit and look at the clock every 30 seconds. Um, but that's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> Did your mic change? It sounds a little more muffled. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. For, it got a lot quieter. And I can hear myself oh, I'm sorry. play back a little. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all good. We're, you were saying such good stuff. Right, I wanted it to be louder. All right, I got you. Uh, shall I repeat that or? Yeah, say it again. Okay, so um, it's just like uh, um, it, meditation and time. Uh, you know, it it, it kind of lets you let let go of of thinking about you know time and minutes and hours. Like if you really kind of get zoned out meditating, you can kind of look up and be like, oh man. You know, two hours have passed. I'm just been sitting here chilling. Like, uh, so it's definitely one of those times to let go of, you know, the freedom of, of uh, or to get into the freedom of letting go of time. Uh, and you know, right now we're at an age where you can really, you, you can check the time at any point. You pull out your phone. I'm going to check the time. I'm going to check the time. I'm going to check the time. You talk to anybody at work and they'll tell you how often they check the time or, or they'll tell you they'll tell you when they started. They check the time often, and what they learned to do was 
let me stop looking at the clock because it's making time go slower. <laughs> totally. Um, totally. Totally. Well, I think you said too. I want to tag back to about is he being busy making time feel different and go differently, and the concept of busy work people talk about and do and. So that's, I'm glad you said that. That actually kind of goes back to uh, what I said about me getting my time back um, and kind of having busy work that I enjoy now, you know. Music has kept me busy, but uh, what I meant by getting my time back was getting the freedom of my time. Being able to be like, okay, I want to work now. I'm feeling creative now i'm feeling productive now and this is when i want to work you know beforehand it was you're working from four to twelve o'clock it's like well you know i woke up yesterday and that was cool i woke up today and i'm like i really wish i didn't have to work to, from four to twelve you know, music music kind of lets you lets you be free about when you work some days you wake up at 10 o'clock immediately inspired all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna do it now some days you wake up and like, I'm not going to do anything for six hours. And then, <laughs> you know, then maybe I'll do like, you know, four or five hours of creativity. It just, it allows you to uh, work in your own cycle, you know, and it's, you know, it's one of those things that when you can work in your own cycle, you do kind of get some of your time back. Time slows down. You You enjoy every day a little more instead of, you know, lumping life into five days of work and two days of play. Totally. That point is so real of, I feel like that way about meal prepping often, like people who meal prep and like plan all their meals in advance. And my question for that always comes to, or like often comes back to like on Sunday night, if people like people who meal prep and your body, your choice, do what works for you. My real question is, how do you know what you're going to want and how much you're going to want for lunch on Thursday? Like, how do you really know exactly like you're going to want that portion of that food like Thursday at noon? Like, how do you know that? And there's people who meal prep for like extending the metaphor who will like, you know, make rice and beans and like batch cook certain things and then put stuff together. That one I get more. Yeah. Uh, like of like having stuff ready. The like when I first learned about like this very set meal, like making the whole meal prep, I'm like, well, it's similar to the like, okay, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this exact thing in this exact time range every day. And for me personally, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. what? I'd love to just be able to eat. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then to keep on that metaphor, like I've definitely experienced different disordered eating tendencies and some of it is related to that feeling like I'm not allowed to just eat or like that's not okay or there isn't the structure, the safety, the support to do that. You know what? Uh, I'm one of those people. I've gotten into intermittent fasting uh, the past few years. I think I started it uh, because I was at work and, you know, I didn't want to eat as much fried food. You kind of get tired of eating at work. I, it was one of the first things I learned. Like, once you eat all the food there, you don't even want to eat. So, But you end up eating late night a lot and all this. So it's like, all right, cool. Like, I don't want to eat late. Let me try to give myself an eating window, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it, it worked really well for the service industry, actually. It was like, all right, cool. This will, you know, keep me going. And I always kind of have a good, I think one of the things about it, uh, just kind of having that little fast, it really does be like, oh, this is what I want to eat. Like, this is what I'm hungry for. Also kind of have, you know, the deep belief of how high caloric our food is. Like, you know, a bag of chips is a thousand calories, you know, and we're supposed to have a 2000 calorie diet and a bag of chips isn't going to fill you up. So it's just, and weird things like that. Totally. Um, now, when I got well, I out, I, I want to poke at the two thousand there because I disagree with that number. And even again with like the number being so, like I think it's going to be different yeah. too for different people in different days. Certainly. But also that point too that you're saying that I feel of respecting the boundary of it or the concept of I do feel better if I give myself a window before going not to eating. Sleep. Yeah. And like, that's not like I had chocolate late last night before going to bed. Like it's not something and also giving myself that flexibility of yeah not being so rigid about the rule and still also 
I guess respecting well it's not a concept though like the concept of digestion and rest and like yeah you're like your body would can put more blood to other things if it's not putting blood also towards digestion in that whatever window this is like now we are it's like almost feels like playing and manipulating with time in some ways of like oh I was literally about to say that's time again like you know the time and energy your body's taking into being like man we've been digesting food constantly for four days like (laughs) where you know if you take your take a little pressure off your digestive system you know maybe everything else will run a little bit you know smoother and i mean it's not just about not eating it's about eating well sometimes it's about eating what you want like you know i'd I'd say intermittent fasting but i go through like kind of you know ups and downs of like uh you know i don't care this week like uh it, and I've done it so long that it's almost like naturally how I eat. Like I can feel myself being like, oh, okay. I probably like, you know, I'm feeling a little lethargic. Let me not eat for a minute. And then I feel like, oh, I'm running again. Now I've also taken it to the extreme because I said I, I did it in the service industry for about two years. When I got furloughed, uh, I got a lot of time. And I was like, let me see how I can really push the fast. Like there are times where I do want to be like, all right, let me test myself. Let me test my boundaries. Uh, this year, I did three straight days, uh, no food, um, just water. And it is terrible. It is te- <laughs> I've not done a, I've done juice fasting, feasting. I've not done water. Goodness, it is terrible. There was a, there's always a point, like, not like maybe a, a yeah, day and a half <laughs> into it. <laughs> It's, it's I'm not. I'm trying to think. I th- I've done like in 24 in a window. No, 72 hours of just water. Terrible. <laughs> Tell me more. How did it feel? Like w- yeah. terrible. Where mentally, physically, emotionally. So it comes back to time. Uh, you you hit a point where in your Concept. in your mind, you're like, I don't want to think about food. I'm not thinking about food. When I say I have never experienced slower time then like a day and a half into a three-day fast where I'm like, oh man, I got a day and a half till I can eat. Like, <laughs> Which is the same thing for me and my like, like my experience of service industry of being like, okay, like six more hours. Okay, five more hours. Okay, like, yeah. like, you said, like, like learn not to look at the clock. <laughs> I bet you learn cool. not to, because you're, that's interesting. I've heard that experience from other people too of saying like time has never felt slower. Never. It's terrible. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't sound like it felt fun. It wasn't like time was like, like you know what? Say like you know when you let, like time flies and you're having fun or like you were talking about laying there and being like, wait, it's been no. two hours in the field. I I did make some great music. I did it it it, it very much uh, cleared my head. You know when you're not when you're trying to be like I don't want to think about food, you're thinking about a lot of other stuff. Like, <laughs> how did your body feel after? Um, and also, did you, know, you like ease back? Did you ease in and out with fruit or smoothies, or like how did you do it? I eased them with salad. Okay. Um, just you know, I was like, all right, let me eat a little salad first. That'll, you know, just go through and clean, clean everything in there, and you know, kind of get the body rolling. I didn't want to be like, all right, let me get a fucking pizza. Like, <laughs> yeah, that that sounds <laughs> extreme. Like, that sounds like a lot. So, well, like, you know, to go from that to. You know, so, but... Eat for 72 hours. It, it, like I said, it very, very much clears the head. Very much, like, you know, it. you kind of focus on breathing. It, it didn't, it doesn't hurt. Like, it, it, even your stomach, my stomach, it wasn't like, oh, I'm in pain. It's just, you know, kind of accepting the, the, the stillness of where my body was. Of, like, okay... You know, I don't want to move a lot. You know, I can't go up and exercise. But I still need to get around. I still want to do stuff. Um, and like you said, mentally kind of slowing that time down. Um, I think maybe, I don't know if I did it subconsciously, but it definitely gave me a solid space to really think about music and really kind of tap out of everything else that was going on and tap into myself. Mm, I was going to ask if you felt more connected to yourself. New idea. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so what about concept of self? Like, are time and money these things we use to define our concepts 
of self or like that we've been conditioned to or like is self a concept you like to feel more certainly um so i'm gonna talk about uh black people in our history in america real quick when you talk about self and money and and music as well um when you look at how money focused our music is it's it's hard for black artists to make it right now if they aren't extravagant about their self self-worth they could even come from a rich background but if they didn't get that self-worth in the way that the community wants you to get it you can't show it you know you can make it in the rap game right now by just having a lot of money and being flashy i think a lot of our attention right now because of social media and i I, you know we get to we kind of remember when it started i remember when uh instagram used to have rich kids of instagram and that was the first real profile I can remember of being like, oh, it's just people showing off boats and houses and all that. Well, those kids were way ahead of Instagram, uh, apparently, because that's all Instagram is now, really, is, you know, if you if you tune into that. Now, I, I, I have mine. Mine just shows, like, paintings and people I know. And, you know, I'm, I'm using it kind of like, oh, you know, social media, like, but it really, I think people really think about their self-worth. When you, when you look at how many 21-year-olds on the internet will be like, you know, I haven't made it at 21. And it's like, well, I hope you don't. Like, there's still a ton of life left. You make it at 21 and, like, life's, you know, set at 21. is like, you, you might be bored for the next 30 years. Like, yeah, you know, it's just, and so self is, self is something that you kind of both have to control and let go you know you do have to know yourself to let go of who you are and when you let go of who you are you move through life a lot more fluidly Mm, very well said i'm again thinking of my head is quoting today there's a quote (laughs) that says something along the lines of the curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. Yes. Uh, part, yeah, honestly. So what helps you to do that with that acceptance piece? And also accepting that the change is going to happen and that you don't necessarily get to direct the change. I guess um, I always say... Very personal help here. No, no, no. Go ahead, sure. I love it. Um, when I, when I moved to war, to New Orleans, that's where I said Black Lamore was, was birth. You know, that's where I I'd first felt, uh, fully, whoop, that's, you know, one of those places I first felt fully loose, like, you know, no rules. I'm in college, uh, and I was at uh, a liberal arts college, you know, so those people also like, no rules, we're going to do whatever you want kind of figure out oh well there are rules but you know it's still new orleans you can break them this is that um and hear a little bit more also in this about black lamore and you talked in the beginning some about i would love to hear more about that emergence that change <laughs> all right so I, this is I, this is a little bit of it um and you know in high school i was a fun guy but you know st louis uh because of the the nature of the city kind of there was a lot of um there were some negative things about st louis that i had attached to myself that then i take to new orleans and it's nothing like that the complete opposite everybody's very friendly not a very clickish place like you know do what you want like you'll meet people you're running into people um and you know i do that for five years and then i came back home and i remember i was on a uh we were on a cruise with uh, my family and some uh, and a bunch of family friends of ours. And I remember talking and being like, yeah, I came back home and I don't feel like myself anymore because I couldn't really use that. Uh, Black Lamore, you know, had to, I won't say die in St. Louis, but he, you know, I couldn't be that full wildness because it was gonna get me in trouble uh, back home. And so, you know, I, I kind of, 
come back home and St. Louis is in a place where you can really run from your problems or things that you were supposed to do. You know, it's so familiar here. And I mean that both in like people you'll know and the proximity to family sometimes, you know, family puts a lot of pressure on you. You run into family here a lot. Family has this idea of what you were supposed to be and this, this and that. And so I'm back home, I don't finish college. You know, I, everybody expected to me, me to be like an engineer or a doctor or something. And I'm sitting back here not feeling like myself and I get to music and it's that first time that I'm like, oh, this is that feeling of like, you know, Black Lamour, of the wildness of like, ah, you know, being able to scream and all that. Uh, Cause I feel like St. Louis is an oddly quiet place sometimes. Um, especially for black people. I always tell black people like, you know, don't be afraid. When black people are afraid to, to speak and be loud, it's usually a place where I'm like, eh, this makes me a little uncomfortable. And so I'm back home. I kind of tap into Black Lamour. And just as the musical journey has continued, just as I've put more intention and, and effort into creating, you know, this, this, this concept of Black Lamour as an artist, because, you know, he is me, I am him. But at the same time, like, there is a, a, a small divide, you know. The, the very smallest of, 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 I guess, control. You know, Sean is a little more controlled. Sean sometimes is like, I need to do this, I need to do that. This is important, I have to go do this. Whereas Blackmore is just like, no! Like, <laughs> I'm going to do what I want. And there was uh, merging those two into, into, you know, the artist that I am now has really been that, that sort of, you know, letting go of, of self, of being like, well, you can be both of those people and still not, you know, don't be afraid to be too wild and then bounce back and be too tight and now you're constantly in this back and forth. Like once you just let go of like Blackamore will be here when he needs to be, Sean will be here when he needs to be. And you know, just and they're all me, they're all myself. It's not, you know, a split. You're able to just move forward and be like, all right, cool, like, you know, take me for as I take me as I am, because this is who I am. Like Ooh, there's so much in there. And that's so cool about you encouraging people and especially black people and especially black people from St. Louis to be loud. Yeah, it, it's, I, I think it's another one of those reasons, you know, I said uh, getting my time back and, you know, the freedom of being able to work when I want. But that's another one of like, you know, especially back home. I think there's so much musical talent in St. Louis. Uh, you know, we that's where we really, you know, first met was in musicals. And in choir. Yeah, in musicals and choir. And you know, we we know all these Muni kids and and there's a lot of musical and theatrical talent in St. Louis, but there's not a lot of outlets for it, which is, you know, kind of seems strange. And I came back home and then I got to the rap scene and I'm looking at all these rappers. It's like a thousand rappers here. I'm like, are you kidding me? And there's no major label. And I'm like, well, that seems odd. There's no outlet. And so it's like all this charged up energy with no, you know, uh, means to escape. And a lot of it is about uh, keeping black people quiet sometimes because when you keep people quiet, you do control. Them. Totally. Not talking about the thing, then there's no way to change it. Yeah. Whoa, maybe you'll have the first label there. <laughs> no, 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 I try not to, I try not to look too far ahead. Like, <laughs> right, we're in the moment, be present. Maybe you'll get to help me. I look forward to one day seeing St. Louis have, have, have way, also way more recording studios than they have, like. I think it's very close. I think it's, I think it's, you know, I think because of the connectivity of things we're doing, like things we're doing right now, I think it's, allowed um you know like a, once again outlets it's allowed people to tap into different outlets and be like oh i didn't know that i made music similar to people in 
you know, Canada, let me send something up there. Like, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's good to, for them to be able to experience that. Like, you know, people will enjoy what you're making all over the world, whether you know it or not. Mm. And like you said about channeling those experiences, those feelings into something. Yeah. And that pressure valve of like, well, where does it go if it doesn't have somewhere? Yeah. And you, I mean, so you ran into that and then you released the valve, like you put out an album, you, you were like, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta put this somewhere. Yeah. Was that like Sean and Black Hole are working together? They like, yes. take the steps to do this, we can be a team. Yeah, that's pretty much, um, because it, you know, it's two pronged, like you can make incredible music but you also have to kind of know how to package it. You know, you have to know how to work with people and and get over yourself of, you know, so much of art is about, you know, the self, about uh, this is how I feel. And, you know, and you can get, you, you do get very sensitive. Not you can, you do get very sensitive and, you know, are people going to like this? And, and, you know, the two of, I, I hate, saying that it makes me sound so crazy but the two of them working together you know sean and blackamore uh it gives you know a little bit of balance like all right cool cool don't stress over that you know you don't you didn't make this beat or you didn't play the instruments like you know do what you do best and then let everybody else do what they do best and you know just you know letting it all you know and 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 honestly sometimes it's fun to uh just sit back and help um help somebody else understand their outlet like you know help somebody else get their sound and their voice and be like oh oh I, this is what i was trying to do and it's like yeah you know because once you get over that self and and once you once you kind of let go and and find your balance then you you know when you work with other people they start to get in line just in the the natural thing of music of everybody kind of getting in the same time and rhythm and then next thing you know you know it's everybody's laughing <laughs> we're back on the light now and then not taking stuff so seriously like we're hanging out making music yeah <laughs> totally totally do you think in terms of like conceptualizing money and time how does this music and how does black Lamore relate to those uh my next project uh, there's a little bit I, I talk about that a little more um just uh you know what right now where we're at at its base money is a physical representation of our time um you know, if, if I have a million dollars right now, I could just stop working for a year. I could do nothing for a whole year and be like, well, I have a million dollars. You know, it, it, and so um, with the music, it's just like, you know, it's that weird thing of, you know, you don't want to make music to make money because, you know, you'll, you, you can. It's a formula to do it. But um you won't necessarily be making what you want uh and i guess as far as time um you know it, it, you do want that time to make more music so it puts you in a weird place like if i just made music and didn't make any money which is where i'm currently at <laughs> uh um well, I guess, you know, I've had the furlough, which was wonderful for me, uh, where I've had time to do it without worrying about getting money to make the music. Um, you know, when you, when you have that, when you're not focused on it, you make really good music. But at the same time, if, you know, everything went back to normal tomorrow and I had to go back to work, you know, I'd be like, I'm really lucky I finished that project because when I was trying to make it, when I didn't have as much time, to really sit back and think about it, I didn't like what I was making. I, I kept, you know, creating things and being like, ah, ah. So it's 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 like a weird, you know, uh, paradox. Totally. Well, it kind of makes me think of that part of 
like if every day you're scheduled to work in this hours, cause I've, I've done this in my experience of being like, okay, well then I'm going to be creative in this hours and like schedule creativity. Like, and we talk about that doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't work. Really work. No, you could like maybe schedule like editing or certain kind of things that border on creative busy work or even then it's like, uh, yeah. How do you feel about the stuff you make when you're doing it? because you want to at that moment versus like, oh, well, I have to right now. There's not, ooh, and this too is like, there's not enough time to be there's, creative. And so just like there's not, very enough, much money, there's not enough creativity in the world. That's certainly where I was at of being like, of panicking, stressing, like, oh man, I only got these two days to make music before I go back to work. And then I have to focus on work and kind of, you know, you have to kind of change your personality a little bit in the service industry of like, I'm not going to give you 100% me because I'm just trying to give you your food. Like, <laughs> not, I'm trying to give a lot of people their food and their drinks. Like, well, it's a, it's a lot of energy to be yeah. your, I, I mean, in my experience, that's part of the putting protection, putting walls, putting like, okay, I'm not going to give all of these things to all the people. Because in my experience, service and just like, you can't, you would go home I'd, and be done. You can't like, there isn't the yeah, time please. and there's not the emotional energy to go into all the things with all the people because there's so many people you're interacting with. Yeah, you drive yourself nuts. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, you know, it, it would be like, it would, it would almost be like, you know, trying to switch between service industry, Sean and Black Lamore. Like, I would, I would, I would get off work sometimes and I'd go to the studio and it was hard to record because you know i'd been talking like hello ma'am how would you what would you like to drink today i can get this for you you know and i'm talking like that all day and then i'm and then i had to like go and record and be like uh you know and my my the, the other artist i'm working with was like loosen up like i can hear you like you know not where is black lamore like he you know he he would do things like he'd try to intentionally kind of get me a little angry you know we're in there like you know, I need Black Lamore, like, and and I remember when it clicked, uh, cause I think I heard the recording, and then we sat down and we talk and we get in some little heated conversation. He's like, "All right, now get back in there," and I heard it and it clicked, and I was like, "Man, uh, this is stressful. Like, <laughs> like I have to like fully let go." You know, and I'm driving straight. You know, I I got 20 minutes from work to the studio. In 20 minutes, I have to completely de-stress from work and try to get into creativity. And like you said, when you when it's kind of locked in a time like that, it just doesn't feel like it's flowing. You were like doing the like car outfit change between two things. Of course, they're <laughs> connected. Like, or like one part isn't allowed or... Yeah. That's really cool too. And then like the, the power and use of recording and reflection and someone else to be like, here, listen to these two, two try like listen to these two takes you just did. Like here, listen to, learn from your own voice. Like here. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Is this how you sound? <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if that's part of like that, that thing where we hear ourselves recorded and we're like, whoa, what? Is that how it like, we're yeah. like going about that discovery and we're like, this is is this what I sound like to other people? Like, is this what this is? Is this what I hear? <laughs> yeah, well, and also like you're talking about of like, your purposeful shifting how you sound to other people based on what you're, well, with the service industry one is one based on money and like a need, like I have to do this job and do this thing. Whereas the music and recording one is the like, in some ways it sounds more like that's, and I'm projecting my artistic experience. Oh, so part yeah. of you that is like, hey, I want to come out. I need to come out. Like, I, I haven't had a voice. I haven't been able to make noise yet. Certainly. Um, I, and, and honestly, like, uh, I, there was a point in my life where I was like, I'm going to make noise. Like, I'm going to, you know, I, I just, I guess once I figured it out, and that was, it was in high school probably, it's, I think it's, you know, when I'm in plays and musicals, I'm like, oh, I'm good at this. People like to hear me, you know, and all that. And in college, I honestly let it go. I, I, you know, I went to school for psychology and that was probably half the reason, like, I don't finish because I'm like, 
you know, I don't care about this. Like, uh, you know, and, but I, but I'd always known, like, you know, I'm gonna do something that, that requires my voice requires, you know, me to speak requires me to be loud. And, and, you know, and, and like you said, being able to shift into it has been so wonderful being able to kind of see it a little more. It's just been a, a bit of a relief. Yeah. Do you feel like that part of you then gets to come out more in other parts of your life? Because, like, I can even see, and, like, I've, again, ref like, in my experience with the podcast, like, I used to be way more rigid with the podcast and way more the, like, hello, ma'am, sir, how, what can I get for you today? <laughs> and as you do it more, you know, you, 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 you kind of, like, oh, yeah, you know, I can just do this. Like, I can just, you know, there are times when I'm extremely tired. I don't necessarily know if I feel creative or not. And I can still be like, oh man, that was nice. Or, you know, I'm glad I tapped into that create creativity at that time because normally I don't, or, you know, it just, yeah, like you said, like, and, and I guess in real life, um, I think it is some of like, uh, you can hear a little less service industry and in how I speak, but at the same time, like, I think people can just see the looseness of my life. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's gotten a little looser. They're like, Sean, do you care? It's like, yeah, I do, but like, not a lot. Like, <laughs> right now, you mean? Yeah, just like with the furlough, I've just been like, oh, you know, just afloat, like, just straight, like, you know, I'm not worrying about going in and getting money today. Like, I'm just kind of waking up, like, let me get something to eat. You know, the last maybe month or so, I'm like, let me get something to eat. Let me work out. Like, let me, you know, it, it, it's, and, you know, I think people can really see in my demeanor that I'm just taking things, you know, day by day instead of working for the weekend. Oof. Which then, yeah, that changes your whole, dropping that whole concept of time. I know too yeah. that working for the weekend, that, that mentality of, to me, it, it puts, it clouds the whole, all of time, all of the things. Because you're yeah. just in that, like, rather than, like, what you're saying of, okay, what am I doing today? I'm going to eat. I'm going to move my body. Cool. Which which is a privilege to do. And then also now, with everything going on with the pandemic and everything in the world, it's, it's sh like, that privilege level is shifting. And then how and how people are talking about it and people being like, well, wait a minute. Why, why are certain things privileges that are everyone deserves to wake up and eat and move and yes everyone like you know that's not whatever what and make art whatever like music whatever it yeah. is whatever creative practices like maybe it's the cooking food for yourself and that's the the creative outlet if if money went away tomorrow the only reason people would lose their minds is because they wouldn't know what to do with all the freedom. You know, they, that's what causes the chaos. What do you mean I'm free now? I don't have some structured, you know, well, what am I supposed to do? What does life mean? What is, you know, that's where they go. And it's like, if you just, if you just don't panic about it, it'll just come to you. Like, you know, but. Like, you mean life's supposed like, to be fun? I'm supposed to enjoy this? What? I'm yeah. supposed to feel good most of the time. Suffering's only supposed to be a teeny bit of this. Yeah. See, but you know, I think, and we're we're really in a suffer. Su I'm sorry, suffer uh, culture right now. You know, it's so <laughs> much like I gotta stay up. You know, eight hours to study for this test tomorrow. I gotta work twenty hours because I'm trying to grind hard and you know work up the ladder. I gotta you know suffer to to get what I want, and it's like. Yeah, I hear you. Um, and I think, you know, there's a there's a thing to tapping into a bit of suffering. But like you said, you don't need to be constantly suffering because, you know, that's not life. Like if you want life to be constantly suffering, that's that sounds a lot more like hell than you know, than life. Like and you can create, you know, hells in life if you if you wanna focus on suffering. Totally. Well, then to go all the way back to your very first intro of where you came from, where you were born into, how do we, 
I guess maybe also music is one of the ways and talking about it and, and, and acknowledging, not acting like things didn't happen that did happen. How do we acknowledge suffering that did happen? How do we acknowledge there is a lot of racism still in St. Louis and in the world and there are still yeah. all of these like voices that are being amplified and voices that are being muffled and how to, it's like not spiritually bypassing essentially and also saying, okay, well, we're here to enjoy life. Um, you know what? No big uh, deal of a question. I have no, I, I just, I'm like, <laughs> these all feel no so interrelated. Very light question. <laughs> um, How do we use music and art to overcome systemic racism and historical injustices and epigenetic trauma? Sean. <laughs> uh, I like that word you use, epigenetic. Uh, is that, is that repeating? Um, so epigenetics is like how environment and genes is the nurture nature overlap like to me and, it's just a way of saying there is a collective consciousness like there is a like your the, the dna that made you you have some of those memories that programming is still in those so that's and so that's the one those. that's the one i'm that i'm glad you said that that's kind of what i felt and so uh, you know, how do we get over that? And I personally have done a lot of that. Like my family here, uh, we've been through a lot, um, a lot of, a lot of tragedy in my family, a lot of young death. Uh, and I kind of focused on it. I looked at it and I was like, oh man, like, you know, there are times I felt like death was on my shoulder. Like, yeah, you know, you know, this happens in your family guy. Like, you know, I'm here watching you sitting there close to you. Mm. And I, you know, sometimes it's just when they talk about breaking cycles, well, first you need to know what the cycles are. Like you can't just, you know, we keep screaming, we're trying to break cycles, we're trying to break cycles, but we're trying to break cycles without talking about any of the history of the cycles. So it's like, you're not really trying to break cycles, you're just using a phrase. You know, when you talk about actually breaking cycles, you have to have like, well, this happened in history right here, right here, right here, and right here. And then afterwards, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Well, if you look at right now where we're at, it seems to mimic that. What happened afterwards? You know, it, it's, and so it's, it's about just being cognizant of like, you know, it, it, I always say the hardest place to stay in, in this long line of time that we live in is the present. It's very easy to look at all of the past because it's a bit, you know, at this point it's, you know, kind of documented. Like now it's, you know, video documented, but, you know, you, you can kind of get a concept of how big at least the past of humanity is. It's very easy to worry about the future and to, to assume what will happen. Very easy to do that. But to stay present requires a certain level of presence of, of, of self once again and if we are not present if it's constantly well we're looking toward the future to avoid the past you know sometimes you know you don't go well what's going on right now like <laughs> and so i think you know just to get over that i had to really figure out like well what's going on in my life right now that mimics what my father went through that mimics you know, what his grand or what his father did, you know, and, and which way am I running? You know, do I want to avoid it or do I want to crash into it? Do I even have the option? You know, is it just going to happen? And so it's just kind of letting it flow. And if you are at least a bit aware of those cycles, but not focused on them, I think it, it, it helps kind of, um, you know, you're not going to break every cycle in life. It, it's, you know, that'd be weird um, if you just woke up. <laughs> I broke all my cycles. I'm free. Like, but at least, you know, kind of knowing and being like, damn, you know, when I do this, this happens. And when my dad did that, that happens. When my brother did this, that happens. And maybe, like, we should, at least if I know that I did that, I can be like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh man, let me, you know, so it's just, you know, a whole fun little, and that goes back into, you know, black people were very much a, a culture of breaking cycles. There was a, 
uh, a book. I only read like the first 170 pages of it. Like it, kind of, it did get repetitive. Um, but it's about New York's most dangerous criminal, uh, Willie Boskett, and it's called All God's Children. And it traced this dude's family back to slavery. And it was literally a cycle of a dude uh, committing a murder because he was severely mentally unstable, like having a child and leaving that family. And then the child goes on to commit a murder because he's severely unstable and having a child and leaving the family. They did it like four or five straight generations till they finally got to like a 14 year old who committed a crime where he had to go to life for it. And that's how the cycle broke. You know, it, it ended in death. But like they went through his family and it was like, man, this seems all super the same. And it's, you know, black people don't necessarily, I don't think a lot of times we look into, you know, what were y'all really doing to where we're here now. You know, what are the things that were behind the scenes, undercover, in the dark, that well, you didn't know also, tell us about? Yeah, and then there's also all of the privilege of historical records being biased or more people having access to make more, to do more, being able yeah. to trace more. Yeah. But there and is so, and also the, like, how do you, like, you are jumping in of like them still you're saying how do you acknowledge what you are the pattern that you're seeing yeah. and I'm also sort of hearing you like again doing that like acknowledging duality of Sean and Blackmore and these two parts <laughs> of, like okay I can both acknowledge the cycle and notice it and observe it and I can also not do that thing where I stare at the clock being like and it's been 15 seconds and it's been 15 seconds <laughs> yeah 15 seconds. <laughs> certainly yeah ooh like noticing the circle and the season changing. Wow, that story is nutty about. It was crazy. You 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 look at it and go, you know, it, it it's one of those things. In eye opener, like, oh man, like I remember, I I literally remember, remember reading that. I may be like twenty one, and I was like, ah, oh, black people got to look into our history. Like we really got to focus on like, cause yeah, you, know, you you read something like that and you go. Like I read something like that, and I thought about my family, and I was like, "Oh no!" Like, <laughs> like, oh, oh. And so, you know, it's just when you run into something like that that really makes you. And a lot of people, you know, I, it does happen for black people a lot of the time. Uh, a lot of times, they just run into it a little later. You know, they'll catch it at thirty-five, or they'll they'll catch it when they have kids, and you can see your kids doing things that you know, you start being like, "Oh man." that's why I do that, you know, that is why I do that. And you notice it from your kids doing it as they start to do it subconsciously and you correct them and you understand that, oh man, they're learning that from me and blah, blah, blah. Like we do get there, but if, you know, if you get there before you have kids, you know, or before you, you need to learn to break the cycle, if you could just start naturally doing it, like being like, oh, there are things I need to break. It, it flows a little more. It, it, you know, but it's, it's different for everybody. How does that feel connected to what you said about concepts and like concepts being what we're all agreeing on? Um, I, I think, feel like some connection and I don't know what it is. You know what? I think it's just that I think we tend to, uh, we tend to think we agree on a lot more things than is actually true. Um, Ooh. yeah we all like humans think we're on the same page more than we actually are do you think we're more Certainly. different than more similar or more similar than more different um i think it's just that kind of duality thing of like what do you want to focus on uh and whatever you focus on you know you'll be able to to lock into like you know we could sit here and talk about the differences just in our experience in st louis alone for you know a huge amount of time and it's going to be an emotional conversation of well being black here felt like this and being white here felt like this you know and then if we focus on the positive you know we're like i love t-rabs like you know like <laughs> yeah it's, it's just how you want to uh look into it sometimes and you know I, me i like to you know bounce back and forth like you know there are positive things there are negative things but you know kind of stay somewhere in the middle and and you know you know, try to figure out 
you know, what are the important concepts that maybe we need to agree on? What are we, what are the concepts that we can be like, those are negative. Okay. No matter what little positive spin you put on it, that's negative, you know, whatever that's positive. Like, I know it may not feel like it, but that's actually positive. So, you know, I think just um, for black people, like being able to take some concepts that we need to look into ourselves and kind of figuring which side of the aisle to put them on, or if they need to be on the side of an aisle or, you know, this isn't that. Mm, totally. So how do we then, if like we do maybe end up on slightly different pages all as humans, how do we get on how do we all get on the same page of what we're prioritizing? Like what concepts of, cause this is where like, you know, if you talk to people one-on-one -on -one and you say food is a human right, I'm yet to meet someone to disagree with that concept. Be like, you say no. it's a large thing. And oh yeah. I want to talk about it. And then people are like, yeah. Oh my God, what are you doing talking about this? Or like, or just like, don't, or just people go quiet. Yeah. Um, that's funny you said that. I think it kind of comes back to uh, collective consciousness. Somebody said earlier. Um, I think we can the web, tap into. You said too. Yeah, <laughs> but but speaking of the web, um, I think because of the internet, you can oh. tap into pockets of collective consciousness, um, and sort of. I mean, uh, they they talk about like. Uh, bots on the internet, right? Bots on the internet, one thing that I've seen is they stir up racial conversations. They Like, if you go on Twitter, if you ever look at, like, intense race, racial conversations and you click the first one and then you start clicking, you know, who's saying what, you know, you kind of be like, these don't feel like fake accounts. And it's because you know, it's a pocket of collective consciousness, especially here in America, our collective consciousness of under of our understanding of racial tension. Well, once you kind of understand it and know how to tap into, you know, that, that collective consciousness, you know how to push, you know, within the big pockets, there are smaller pockets and pockets that don't disagree. And this is, you know, you know how to, you know how to push buttons and, 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 yeah, you know, we, we need to figure out how to do that because we've seen it happen on a negative way. We've seen internet manipulation where you know people come in and we this is what you know and rile the people up. But it's also kind of on the opposite of you know maybe bursting some of these echo chambers and bubbles we're in, and kind of making that consciousness. You know, it, it's about you know I, yeah popping those bubbles and kind of making it like, no, 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 y'all. Like, we all agree on this. I get the things you're nitpicking about. Like you said, food is a human right. But if there's somebody back there going, well, I mean, if they worked hard and they got money, uh, you know, then they, they'd have more food. But when you keep going back, well, do you agree that food is a human right? Yeah. So the other things you just said don't matter. Like, and once you get them there, then, you know, once you burst that bubble and they kind of get into the big one of everybody being like, all right, yeah, yeah, food is, it. we have to agree on that. Like, it's just about popping bubbles and, you know, all that fun stuff. Popping bubbles and breaking cycles feel similar, like breaking the circle. Yes. <laughs> and then also, like you said, you got to notice it. You have to acknowledge it first. You have to see what's, what's happening. Like, wait a minute, what if time is a circle? And also, we're seeing it as a linear <laughs> part of that circle. Like, what the fuck? How are those both right? Certainly, certainly. What if time is a, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like, um, it's like walking on the earth, you know, and you talk about flat earthers. Oh, you know? <laughs> Sean, it is, because we see that we experience the earth as flat. Oh. But you know it's round. <laughs> <Sean>. <laughs> I love that first time being a circle and just seeing a flat linear pole. Oh, dude, whoa. Yeah. Talk about changing my concept of concepts there. Holy. <laughs> and like using it. Whoa. I really like that. Whoa. I wonder what the flat earthers would say on the internet. Also, I want to tag back 
to what you were saying about <laughs> bots being the ones my like conspiracy light started going of like why are bots the ones stirring up racist conversations like who are the white supremacists who are out there doing this to stir shit up and like who are you people and why are you doing this yeah who are making those bots or who are doing these like i just think in, in times of chaos you can do you can do almost anything when people are, are kind of high tension and very uh, anxious and depressed, like you could do anything, literally anything in the background. Like if I was- The yeah, gorilla basketball was, video. Did you ever see that? I'm sorry to cut you off. The, there's a gorilla basketball video. Mm -mm. Okay, you go first. I didn't mean to- I get no, 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 you go, you go. What okay. is this? It's this video, uh, I'm spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. Let's turn off, turn this off now. There's a YouTube video that says, hey, watch this clip of people playing basketball and count how many times that they throw, the, how many passes they're made. Count how many times the ball is thrown. So you watch the video, you focus really hard, everyone gets to the end and they're like, okay, how many passes were made and you say the number. Then they go, or they get to the end, excuse me, I'm telling this terribly. You get to the end and you're expecting to be asked how many passes did they make. Maybe people do it differently too. And then instead, someone asked, did you notice the big gorilla? And then they go back and replay the video where you're going into it looking for, like you're like go, a video you were told to watch for passes and they play the same video back and this big, like a tall, big human in a huge gorilla suit comes on and like dances around gloriously like there's a whole dance in the middle of these people passing the ball and then walks off. And I feel like that's like the visualization for what you were just saying, which is also happening so much with everything, with all of the pandemic, with all of this stuff of like, well, hold on, who's noticing the gorilla here? Cause there is other stuff happening when we're all being told to focus on this. Yes. Okay. That, I gotta that this. I'm, on a, I'm on a ball roll here. Here's my last bit. I was told by someone that people with ADD and ADHD notice the gorilla because they are not able to focus on, like in not being good at focusing on the question of counting the balls, being they're like counting the passes, they notice the thing. And so then it's like, okay, well, why are we talking about this as a disability if these people are noticing what is happening? Yeah, it's, you know, it, it, it it's it's so wild i that's a whole get all that conversation out. that is a whole different conversation about our next um, podcast yes <laughs> um certainly um this is but that that was perfect the gorilla in the back like when when people are focused on this one thing you can literally do anything in the background and they might be like what do you mean <laughs> that never happened and it's like no it did like <laughs> that was perfect <laughs> and then so like what are our core concepts and it's almost like getting distracted by having it's like the the part of the internet or all these things that we can get really dispersed and distracted from like oh well like you were saying like the people who'd be like well if those people worked harder they could have more food it's like okay well what about the concept that people deserve food period and, and then because if you just keep the argument going of of working and they they you know but you 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 eventually you lose the sight of what you were even talking about in the beginning changing our concepts of concepts yes <laughs> all right let's close it a little with talking about funds distribution company and moneyball yeah. And because you were Moneyball co-creator, you are the like the game came just, and us talking on the you're like I'm just here to help. I'm just here to help. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it, and I've appreciated you being so supportive of it and so so willing to help with this. How do we change our concepts of money through like on this flat line of lifetime experience? <laughs> how can we change what we're doing to change how people are seeing it? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna, I would love for you to, if you want to share a little bit about like how, like why you're interested in it or excited about it or like vision Certainly. for it. Not that we can predict anything. Uh, so I, um, 
I think as we have gotten so money focused, as we have, like you said, you know, back to the food, you know, as a everybody deserves food. If you could say, well, you don't have any money, you know, you don't deserve food. You know, it, it, it becomes like, well, are you saying money is more important than food? You know, are you saying money is more important than shelter? Are you saying money is more important than life? And when you get there as a society, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, collapse on itself. It's gonna fall on itself. It's gonna, it's gonna, you know, it has no base. If you're, if the base of your community is money, you know, eventually it will crumble. And I like what you're doing because it's just about like, you know, is money even real? If I went back 800 years with 3 million US dollars in cash and gave it to somebody who was like, give me everything you got. They'd be like, get out of here. What is this paper? You know, like they wouldn't care about all this cash I had. And you know, it's just to get people to obsess less about money because when people are less obsessed with things, you know, you can focus more on your life. You can focus more on, am I happy? You know, what can I do to make myself happy? You know, what? and so I like the idea of you being like, well, you know, let's, let's use money like any other commodity, you know, let, let's, let's, and and I feel like we're at a very stagnant time um, financially in America. You know, it happens. Uh, you talk to millennials and, you know, they'll be like, well, I took out all these loans to go get a job that's never going to pay me enough to get these loans. and Or that's never going to pay me enough to pay off these loans. And now I'm in a position where I am more or less stuck financially. I'm always a hundred thousand dollars in debt. And I think, you know, that freezes money for that person. And freezes you know, a lot they, of their life too. Yes. And and I think I think as a generation, we kinda gotta we kinda have to ourselves get our money moving within each other you know with with between us between you know and it is whoever it is but i think as right now as we're coming up and we're more of us are becoming adults and you know there are those who are close to us close to us who have you know gotten further into adulthood and kind of looking back at us like y'all it's not like you know the money is still kind of frozen like we have to you know unthaw it and i think um, you know, this idea of yours is definitely something that kind of unthaws it and, you know, moves. And, and when things are in motion, you know, it's, they flow, you know, time does not freeze. Uh, so, you know, I'm just excited to, you know, be part of something that, you know, gets money moving. When money, you know, that, that makes people happy. You know, it's it's great for entertainment when money is moving and you can get money into you know, the pockets of indie artists or, or, you know, this is that, and then you never know what you find, you know? So it, 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 I love when things can be a little more random and a little more, uh, you know, exciting, you know, doing the same thing every day eventually feels like nothing. Oof, yeah. Oh, move the money and find your structure and then find the rest of the flow. I definitely, part of it came from my own obsessing over money and my own learning experiences with needing to set different boundaries in both like financially and with people and how that relates. And so I started for people who, please check out Funds Distribution Company on Instagram. <laughs> and the idea is to literally just have a, Instagram page with posts where people can comment like, Hey, I need $25 or Hey, I have $25 to give or whatever it is. And then just move the money between people. And then Sean was like, Hey, just to end here to circle on lightness and fun was like, how do we make this fun? How do we make this? So people see that it's a real thing and also to make it a game. And so we're in the process. Please stay tuned for Moneyball, the game, which is a snowball of money being sent around 
You also use the term microeconomy in making, making pockets. And like you're saying too, like it's, whoa, okay, well let's end it on this part of the circle. How then is this like our generation, this generation of, of humans breaking, dissolving the cycle of money is frozen and stagnant and, and there's not enough of it for everyone because there's not enough resources for everyone. And I feel like to me, this is like, it's like one piece that I have to contribute to that way bigger, like, I, I'm curious if we're going to even like in our lifetime see money as a system change. Um, Again, like no big deal. We're ending the podcast super light here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, super light. <laughs> like, we have no idea. I have no clue. I just uh, come back to food. I just come back to like people deserve a comfy place to sleep and food that they enjoy eating. You know, I think... Um, I think it's the interconnectivity that we have. It's the the being able to to reconnect with um, you know people from high school that you haven't talked to in you know ten years, and and I think maybe previous generations, you know, those people just disappeared. You didn't really think about them anymore. They more or less didn't exist. And I think now we're because of, of, of how technology is and everything, we're very much tapped into more the concept of everybody is people, everybody exists, you know. You can tap into different, you know, ex, you know, people existing anywhere in the world right now. And I think that's going to be something that helps us because, you know, one of the ways to, to end suffering has always been to acknowledge it and to see it. And, and um, you know, we're able to do that a little easier. Uh, like I said a little earlier, like you know, back in the day, like I would have never, we would have just ran into each other randomly maybe like in 20 years and been like, oh, oh, did we go to high school? Again? Like now, you know, it's, it's, you know, you can keep connections for such a long time. There are people who, um, there are people on Facebook who, have every high school friend they've ever had and they know exactly what they're doing and you know and, and so I think just we're a little more connected to each other and it's it's gonna help us um with our collective consciousness and hopefully that collective consciousness will always think good thoughts you know <laughs> Mm. Yes, that's all I got. <laughs> and we're all part of it. So we all get to contribute and change it and and co-create and co-make it and co-conscious it. I'm I'm in brain mush of words. We're all changing it together. And in, and we that seems like where we change it the most rather than exactly like what you're saying, just being like, well, I'm just gonna do my life here and just Yeah. <laughs> and just not. Mm, wow this has been a very fun podcast we feel like we went all over we definitely changed the concept of my podcast concept or like my concept of podcasting and like letting it oh man if I could talk to like the Annie who recorded the first five episodes who like went in with a list of questions and was like here's the order we're gonna ask these questions in <laughs> it's been a very different one I'm, I'm you know I'm always I'm glad to be here I really, I'm excited to to get to keep working on Funds Distribution Company and Moneyball. I'm excited to see your next out to hear, to experience your next <laughs> album, whenever it comes out in its flow of coming out. And please check out Sean's first album. I'm going to link everything here. Thank you. Definitely going to plug and keep plugging and keep posting, Thank you. posting about it. Because what are we all doing besides stoking each other up here? It helps everyone. It's fun. <laughs> all right um, yeah i really enjoyed this thank you for having me annie uh it's, it's this is this was a lovely conversation <laughs> like just uh a lot we you know we went to into a lot but you know it's always good to just um you know just being able to have fun combos like this <laughs> like totally i look forward to podcasting again and getting to learn more from you thank you so 30. much thank you have a wonderful day you too. Thank you for tuning in and thanks for being you.